Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So I'm currently at the cafe, so I'm keeping my voice low, and I'm also keeping this mic right here quite close to me so that you can hear me better. I'm so sorry if you can hear some background noise, but today's video is about um, a very requested topic, and that is about the things that I bring when I paint outside. So I usually bring a backpack like this, so it's quite big, and I fill it with a lot of art materials. Because whenever I paint outside, I don't really have a specific um, topic in mind. So I tend to bring like all the art materials that I want. And let's talk about the paper first. So I'm using Saunders Waterford. I usually bring this block. This is a block style of watercolor paper. So all the sides are actually glued. And there's just one portion where um, you can slide off a sheet using cutter. And I use this block a lot because it's cheaper than arches here in the Philippines. But of course, it depends on um, the country that you live in. Sometimes Saunders is actually more expensive in other countries. So you have to just check the prices. Um, for me, Saunders is really good. I use the cold press version. Um, and whenever I paint outside, they also paint more... Um, more complicated paintings just like this so it's uh, more detailed compared to my usual style because when I paint outside I can focus more and also because it's a different environment I guess it keeps me more creative so let's check out my other things um, okay so this paper is I don't think this is available overseas but it's just a student grade um, paper and it's called Canson 200 GSM. So I think in other countries you have um, Canson XL and I've tried that as well. So I usually bring a student grade paper so that if I have some ideas and I want to doodle, I won't feel guilty um, painting on that paper. And then I also bring a lot of sketchbooks. Um, recently, you might have seen this in a previous video, um, this is the perfect sketchbook. So I have recently been bringing my um, perfect sketchbook because I want to try painting on it on a normal day so that I can give you guys a review next time. Okay, so another sketchbook that I bring is my caddy journal. Um, you've seen me rave about this journal so I have two sizes I have the 20 by 20 centimeters and I've recently finished my journal so this is a different one this is the smaller journal it's 15 by 15 centimeters um, I love this journal because it's very affordable compared to other journals and I don't feel that guilty painting on this whenever I just want to doodle some florals like this so this is what I bring um, also recently I got this Etcher Lab sketchbook I'm also going to give you guys a review um, I'm just going to let you to show you some of the paintings so I use this just for some doodles like this so this is actually 100% cotton paper and yeah I'm, I'm currently loving this sketchbook as well I don't really get to paint on all the papers that I bring when I paint outside I just bring a lot because I don't know like which one I'm gonna use when I'm already at the cafe so now let's talk about the paint that I bring I also bring different brands um, my most used would be my Shinhan PWC. I'm going to open this later, but I use the palette of Core. So Core is a different brand, but I like their palette. So this is what I use for my Shinhan PWC. I'm gonna try to open that later. And then for the other palettes, I bring my Art Philosophy paint like this. and. I usually bring about two or three palettes and then I also recently 
um, love bringing this um, Daniel Smith palette. So let me just open it. Okay, so I have this. I think this is called the Ultimate Palette. So this one has 16 colors. And I forgot the name of this palette. I think this is Colors of Inspiration. Like this. So it's very handy, but it's not... Um, I don't think it's perfectly made. Because as you can see, the palette is... The, the lid is tilted like this. So sometimes the wet paint seeps through over here so it sometimes it smudges my paper or some other things so that's something that i don't like about this palette okay so this is what it looks like inside my core watercolor palette so just to remind you guys the inside um, does not contain core watercolors this is shinhan pwc um, core watercolors, they come in tubes, but they recently came out with half pants, which I haven't um, bought yet. But, okay, let's go to the brushes. So, as you can see, I love travel brushes. And whenever I paint outside, I always just use travel brushes because it's very bulky to bring a separate brush case for the regular handled brushes. And I'm also afraid that my regular handled brushes might get damaged if I put them in a case. So I would rather just bring some travel brushes. So right here I have my Black Velvet Voyage. And this is in size 4. I also have size 6. So I use this a lot. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, I think this is... Let me just open it. This is the Issa Bay Travel Mop Brush. So I always make sure that when I paint outside, I bring a mop brush because it's one of my favorite um, brushes. And then what else? Oh, so I also have the Art Secret um, Squirrel Hair Brush. This is also a mop brush style. But I've been using this a lot. I think I'm. It's gonna be broken soon. So I got this from AliExpress. So you can just type "Art Secret." Let me show you. So that's Art Secret. This is uh, size seven. So they have a different sizing. But yeah, size seven is a good size if you're gonna buy this uh, brush. It's actually not that expensive and then um what else yeah, some of the brushes here i don't really use um, when they paint outside i just forget to take them out so this is um from the rosemary brush brand so this is a dagger brush and this is r12 just in case you're gonna buy um, then lately i have been using this a lot this is the princeton um, neptune series this is a round brush so i'm using just one hand to open this because i'm holding the camera so this is a size six and i love this brush um, it's also synthetic but it mimics a squirrel hair brush and just a tip when you're um, buying travel brushes make sure that there's a hole right here so that your brushes can breathe it's best if you let your brushes um, dry like this instead of putting the lid on right away but sometimes when I'm lazy I do put the lid on while the brush is still wet but that is not advisable so I would suggest that you let your brushes dry before you put the lid on. So aside from the paint, the paper, and the brush, I also bring my water cup just in case I need it. Um, so this is a collapsible cup from Fiber Castell. So it looks like this. And then I also bring um, 
some pens so this is a sakura micron pen um, i got this in japan if you're ever going to japan look for this um it's this i think it's the same as the sakura pen from the u.s i know the body is just a different color but in japan they all have um this blue body um sakura micron pen but i think the quality is just the same and then i'm going to show you something really interesting so whenever i go outside i bring this um like cell phone holder so this is magnetic um it's from the brand base basus i'm just gonna put the name right here um so let me show you how i put my phone okay, so it looks like this so i usually put some weights over here just so the the stand won't fall but this is how i film when i paint outside so i don't usually get to paint um a top view video just um i usually just film um like one minute videos so i also bring um tissue paper to blot off the excess paint in my brush and I'm just going to show you my cute pouch um this is where i put my earphones i also bring my earphones um sometimes you want to focus and you can just listen to some music while you paint and it's also one way um so that you won't feel awkward when you're painting outside i think some of you um, mentioned that you like it feels uncomfortable to paint outside because you know everybody's looking at you because you're painting in a cafe but you can just put them put on some um, earphones and just listen to some music so that you'll forget that um, people are looking at you so let's start with some tips about painting outside so try to look for tables that are near the window so that you can get uh, natural light and, and then like what i previously mentioned um try to bring your earphones with you so that you can listen to music while you paint and also um so that people will avoid talking to you i know a lot of artists don't want to really talk to people when they are painting and you don't want to be disturbed so i guess that's one way that will prevent people from talking to you um, and also it gets less awkward when you have earphones on because it won't feel like you're in a public place um, and then also if you're painting outside like at a park maybe you should bring your own water um, it's not a problem if you're painting at a cafe since it's easy to ask for water from um, the coffee shop so overall i do suggest painting outside of your home because it for me it just um, fuels your creativity it's nice to be in a different environment um, in terms of being um, too shy to paint in a public place because you feel awkward when people are looking at you um, I, I felt that before but for me as long as they are just looking it's okay um, what I don't like is that um, some people may take photos of you without your permission or even take videos of um, your painting process so i guess that's a different story i haven't really experienced that before um i just experienced people um staring at um my painting um but uh, some people will come up to me and say hey um those are beautiful roses that you painted um so yeah i think that's that's my experience with painting in public and i guess that's it for this video i hope that this was helpful to you um, if you have any questions you can comment down below um, don't forget to like this video and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel bye